based on brewery Sterling. Shop to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands Bikes for both of you. I have got one here, the first one I've ever had from the Beeston Brewery based up in Kings Lynn in Norfolk, and uh, it's called Sterling. And the reason I picked it up is because I love World War II history. I am an absolute fanatic about it, and uh, I saw the picture of the uh, Sterling bomber on the front, and I thought I've got to try this. Now, Obviously, there's a lot of beers out there that are named after World War II aircraft. You've got the uh, Spitfire. Uh, there's even a Lancaster Bomber Ale. This, the, this is the Sterling that's named after um, the short Sterling um, bomber aircraft that was used during World War II. Um, it's funny the Germans don't name any of their beers after World War II bombers. I don't know why. Might have to research that. Anyway... Um, as I say, this is the first one I've ever tried from the Beeston Brewery. Um, I was just browsing beers of Europe and I saw this was available and it's quite cheap as well. I think it was just over £2 a bowl. So I thought, I'll give this a go. What is it? Well, it is a bottle conditioned ale. It is 4.5% 4. 4. and it's a 500 milliliter bowl. Uh, the ingredients are malted barley and wheat. No hops. Hmm. It doesn't mention hops, that's weird. Hmm, okay. That's a first. Uh, the bottle contains uh, fine sediment of live yeast. Please allow a few hours to settle in a cool place before pouring carefully to avoid disturbing. If you store this, if you do store this ale, please keep it in a cool, dark place. It's a live product, so it's best enjoyed fresh. Yeah, okay, so I've had this in the fridge and I've just brought it up here um, I I don't know why they're saying to um, not disturb the live yeast I've always always put the live yeast in beers that I've sort of tasted I think it adds to the flavour but I, I have to say a lot of British beers they say don't pour the yeast in whereas in German beers especially Weiss beer they say get that yeast in there because you're going to get some good flavours from it so I tend to sort of pour the yeast in and I'm going to do it with this I don't know whether I'm doing it right or probably not doing it right but I want to see what it tastes like with it in um, just to say on the, on the side of the bottle they, they're mentioning about the, the label and it's saying this is a, an amazing wall mur mural that was painted on the end of a wall of an Air, Air Force building by a Sterling Air Crew member during World War II while stationed at RAF North Creek, which I think is in Norfolk. Some of our malting barley is grown alongside the former runways at Bramhill Fa Brant Hill Farm, making a unique link between this fine ale and the Sterling Bomber. Brilliant. That's I love that. That is great. So there's genuine, there's a genuine link between the name and the beer, which I love. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get it open. Let's see what's going on in the bottle. The missus is playing fucking reggae now. Jesus Christ. I'm going to have to sort her, her tasting music. Look, there's the cap. It's just a plain blue cap. Uh, there is the front of the label. There is that. There is the painting that they're talking about. And there is the back of the label with the history. Oh, sorry, that's the ingredients in it. And there's the history there. So, let's get it open and then let's see what's going on in the glass. So, first off out of the bowl, I want to get the aroma. Oh, wow. Massive chocolate malt in that. Roasted malt, but distinctly chocolate. That's like a bar of dark chocolate with 100% cocoa. 
and again the glass is dirty there's bubbles clinging to the side well there it is in the glass it's a very 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 dark ruby colour I don't know if you can see that or not but look at the you've got loads of bubbles clinging to the side of that glass I have got to sort that dishwasher out what have we got on the nose from the glass oh well there's just a huge chocolate malt and nothing else that is all you're getting so this could be absolutely terrible or it could be brilliant wish me luck let's get it down the hatch cheers Right. Hmm. That is really reminding me of an out beer with the volume turned up to 11. It's really, really, really malt heavy. Tons and tons of bitter chocolate malt. It's like dark chocolate has been melted into that. And it's very nice. There is some bitterness on the back end of that, but it's just, it's so, it's full bodied. I mean, that's 4.5%, but it's so full bodied. I quite like that, but I can imagine it's not for everyone. Well, I've just looked up the, uh, the brewery and it doesn't mention any hops or ingredients in there at all. Um, I've let this calm down a little bit now and it's, as it's bottle conditioned, it may be a little bit stronger than 4.5% malt. So, it does taste really malt heavy. But there's a slight weakness to it. I mean, if you can imagine full bodied, but the back end is, is weak. So you've, you know, you take a mouthful and you think, mm, yeah, this is gonna be a really nice, full bodied ruby ale. And you sort of swallow that and there's not a lot on the end of it. Very slight bitterness, like chocolate bitterness and coffee. It's very, very slight coffee. It's more chocolate than anything else. But, mm, it makes absolutely no mention of what is in here, hop wise. But that's really poor, and their website's quite poor as well. You know, it's, it looks like a fucking five year old has, you know, put that together. So, sort it out, Beeston. But let's get back to the beer. What are we getting? Right, okay. So, it's like a typical British Ruby Ale. There's some fruit on there as well, some dark fruit. Like rich, dark fruit. If you can imagine like a Christmas cake, sort of fruit you'd get in there. And it promises a lot. But it fizzles out into nothing. You know, I'm, if you can imagine um, the Abbott Reserve. Okay. The Abbott Reserve, you get in like big, big malt. As soon as you get it in your mouth, and then that, you know, that you swallow that, and you just bombarded with like your rich caramel toffee malt and stuff like that. You sort of get that when you put it in the mouth, but the back end on this is just very, very weak. Hmm. It it promises a lot, but it just doesn't deliver. Having said that. It's reasonably agreeable. It's not bad. If you like your, you know, your toffee and your chocolate malt, it's full of that. It's very fruity, and it's like a good ruby ale should taste on the initial sort of mouthful. But as you swallow and the back end, it's just like, oh, is that it? You know, 
disappointing, I thought, because, you know, if they'd have got that right, this could have been a standout out. But, sadly, it's just, it's just not got the, the full depth that I was hoping for. So what's the verdict? Well, as I say, I'm disappointed in the um, the overall taste. I mean, it, it does start off really good. You know, really does taste like a standout ruby, British ruby ale. But then, as you swallow, as I say, it just fizzles out into nothing, which is really disappointing for me. So for that, I'm gonna give that a six out of 10. I mean, it was quite cheap. I think that this was on special offer from uh, Beers of Europe, and it was, I think, just over two pound. So cost-wise, it's not too bad, and it's quite easy drinking, and it's bottle conditioned as well. You know, I've, I've poured all the yeast in there. So I think, you know, maybe I've done that wrong. Maybe I shouldn't have put, put the yeast in there, but I always think if you pour the yeast in, you do get more flavour from that yeast. I mean, it's still live, you know, and the yeast, you know, in Europe, European beers, the yeast is actually encouraged to be drunk, especially in Germany. Anyway, I'm digressing. So yeah, six out of 10. Um, it's cheap if you like ruby ale and you want a, a reasonably easy drinking ruby ale, then yeah, go for it. But don't go out your way to buy it because I think you'll be disappointed. If it was a toss up between the Abbott Reserve and this, I mean, the Abbott Reserve wins hands down, and even the Adnams Broadside. I mean, they're, and they're, they're all in breweries from around the same area. I think this is the weakest one out of them. Get it if it's cheap, but don't go out your way because the Abbott Reserve, as I say, or the Adnams Broadside, which you can pick up, you know, in any supermarket, they're just so much better than this. And remember, beer is working class champagne.